So what is shell scripting, right? Or bash scripting that everyone keeps talking about. So bash scripting is this idea of getting all this Linux, Unix commands that you type on your terminal. And instead of typing them manually, one after the other, what we do is we create a file, we put all those commands one after the other, right? So we edit the lines of that file and that file becomes a script, something that we can ask the bash interpreter, something that we can ask our shell to go and execute everything at the same time. Right, so what I want to do is I want to go and I want to go move on to my terminal and I want to go and show how these things actually happen in our common prompt. So here I am in my Linux terminal and everything that I'm going to show you in bash shell scripting, this will work for any Linux distribution and also Unix systems as well, right? FreeBSD, OpenBSD and the Mac OS terminal as well, since Mac is pretty much a Unix-ish system. Right, so I have here my Linux terminal. I am inside my home folder, subfolder source, and then I have another subfolder called sh, and I have pretty much nothing here, right? There is no files inside this folder. What we usually do when we want to create a shell script and a shell script, a bash script, being this file that contains bash comments, contain Linux comments inside, I need a text editor. And one of the most popular text editors for system administrators in Linux is Nano, the GNU Nano editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say nano myscript.sh, and you will see that as a guideline, we always put .sh to identify that that file is a shell script. And as soon as I open my editor, now I'm free to go and start typing the bash shell comments that I want to execute. And I am aware that this is not a quick course on Linux comments, so I'm going to focus only on the aspect of the shell script. So I'm not going to go too crazy on the Linux comments that I'm going to use. So with my file open, I want to start going and entering comments to my script. Let's just say that I want to have the most basic command. I'm going to say echo, right, just to go and print something on my screen. So I can say echo, and I like putting things into quotes. So hello world. And one of the cool things about nano is nano already noticed that you have an extension .sh to that file and already started putting some colors to help us understand what's going on, right? To make sense of this command. So echo is in this bluish color. And then all that string, all the expression between speech marks, hello, comma, space, world, exclamation mark, everything is in this green color. So syntax highlight is one of the aspects that nano really helps us whenever we're editing script files. So the whole idea of having a script file, a shell bash script file, is that I have more than one command, right? It's not just one thing. So I'm going to say hello world. I can say another something. So welcome my shell script. And at the end, I'm going to have, uh, let's just say that I want to list all the files, right? So I actually have a bash external executable being called the ls program from the shell and also echo. Thank you. Goodbye. Cool. So my shell script is very simple. It says, hello world, welcome to my shell script. And then it lists the files of this directory and then says, thank you, goodbye. So as soon as I control O to save and control X to exit, now I have my script.sh. And the way that I ask my shell to execute, there are actually several ways. One of the methods is I can invoke my bash shell, the actual executable of the bash shell, and I can pass as a parameter what is the script, myscript.sh. So this file spits out, hello world, welcome to my shell script. The third line, myscript.sh, is the result of the ls, since I have only one file, it just outputs myscript.sh. And then the last line, thank you, goodbye. So we are asking shell to interpret line by line my shell script. But you will see that that is not usually what people do, right? People don't go and manually say bash, execute my script like that. What you'll see people do is in the first lines of your shell script, people invoke what we call a shebang. Shell, bang, right? So it's this hashtag, exclamation mark. This is a special expression that tells me who is the interpreter of this shell script. So I can say that my interpreter is in the slash bin slash sh. 
right? If I specifically want bash, then I can say forward slash pin, forward slash bash. But since I want this more generic shell to execute things, and I want to be usually portable for other shells, I'm going to just say that I want the forward slash bin forward slash sh to execute my shell script. So now having this little quick directive there at the top, I can control O to output and control X again. So we want to go and execute that shell script directly. So having only one file inside my folder, we usually execute things in Linux by saying dot forward slash. So the current directory that I am, I want to execute my script.sh. If I try to do this, if I try to force execution of this file, my bash shell is saying, I'm sorry, permission denied. You do not have permission to execute this thing. And it is correct, right? If I quickly come here and I list the files in long format to show me the permissions, those first characters there, the R, W, dash, R, dash, dash, so besides read and write, as you can see, there are R and W characters there. I need to have an X character, right? Saying that that file is also an executable. Besides reading and writing, I should execute that file. And we can quickly just fix that by saying CH mode, right? So I'm going to change the mode of that file. I'm going to plus X. So I'm going to give executing permissions to my script.sh. As soon as I do that, and if I list my files, now you see that my file is in red. So this file, it is an executable file. I can go and I can say dot forward slash my script.sh and I'm asking Linux to go and execute that thing. So Linux goes, knows that with that shebang, the slash bin slash sh is the shell that needs to go and interpret my shell script. And it performs pretty much the same thing that we want. So this is us executing our first bash script or shell script. I say bash script because we are pretty much using bash as the interpreter, right, as the main interpreter of our terminal. But you can use Z shell, C shell, any other shell if you have installed in your terminal. And I also really want to point out that bash scripting is a full feature programming language. So if I want to come here and, and I want to add some branching options, right? So for example, if something is true, then I will perform the ls, else I want to perform an ls-l, right? And then fi to end my if statement. So again, this thing right here, I will put my Boolean condition, right? My logical that will return true or false. And then if this thing is true, then I will go and perform the ls. Otherwise, I'll perform an ls-l. Forgive my very basic example, but I just want to point out that we have this option of having if and else statements, I can have for loops, I can have while loops creating variables, right? If I want, I can come here and I can create a variable username equals to Gustavo. And then I can come here and I can say, thank you, user name, goodbye. So I have this option of creating variables, outputting the variable contents, if and else, while loops, bash scripting, shell scripting, we can look at it as this full feature programming language. And it is super important for us to go and as system administrators, as programmers, right? If we want to go and automate our build process, right? If we have to go and check if things are pushed correctly to Git repository, if you want to go and you want to check something on our AWS, Amazon web server, these things can help us a lot, right? To deploy applications, to go and perform checks on our files while this file exists, perform these things, right? If the space in the hard drive is getting to less than 10 gigabytes, display a message to the, the, the user. Only if the user is root, then we perform these things. Otherwise, we do something else. So you see, as system administrators, as programmers, Shell script, bash script can really help our lives. And always, right, do not forget, if you want more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you want, if you have a special option of shell script that you really like, what is your favorite? Is it bash script? Is it Z shell? Uh, what, what do you use usually to create your shell scriptings? Leave a comment on the comment session. But for full feature contents on and comprehensive courses, to beginner friendly courses on Linux, Unix, including things like shell scripting, automation processes, visit our picuma.com platform. I'll see you there.